Thank you. Okay. All right. That works great. And so, so one of the things that we might show you, especially Randy, because you're saying you don't have a whole lot of time to, to work on this, is that we've kind of created uh, like a course shell. Um, so you can just kind of fill in the blanks and not have to start completely from scratch. Yep. So that's what that's I'm good. It is Dutton food for thought. <laughs> well, this is good. This way, everyone gets to see the courses tab in the menu. Right. I guess I should share my screen. That would be good, huh? Okay. Sure. Okay. So let me share my screen with you. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so right now um, what you see is me logged in to Canvas, and we should even go back maybe even further um, to go to the login screen in Canvas. Um, if, you, if you go to uh, instructure.psu.edu, you get to this page. That's kind of, I think, tricky to remember. Um, so if you go to canvas.psu.edu, that takes you to the web page that Training Services has created. And this is the one-stop shopping for help, announcements, training, uh, those kinds of services, what's coming out. Uh, because Canvas, unlike Angel, is a cloud uh, service. So uh, similar to like Google, things will just change every three weeks. And they don't need to shut down the system and run these updates. It's just it's constantly... Um, on and will update and so if something looks particularly Different you don't know what it is. You can always come to canvas.psu to to learn more about that um, But this web page that's what this web page is all about um, But also on this canvas.psu.edu page is this canvas login So that's an easy way to get to that Okay, so once you log in and it is two-factor authentication, which I was struggling with <laughs> you will see. As you, do we all. Yeah. You, you come to the dashboard at first, and on here you will see all of the courses that you're either a student in or as a faculty member. Um, I, or in our case, we're course admins, so we have a, I have a lot of courses on here as well. There is a tab to Angel, which uh, folks have been using up until now to take them into the Angel environment for students that had both courses in Canvas and in Angel. Will that tab be active after Angel shuts down, just for future reference even? No, in fact, oh. there will be no quote future reference to Angel. Um, I have been told a couple different dates, but I would not anticipate being able to get into Angel in the fall or much into the fall. So and is so, there, a, so I teach a spring course, is there, a, um, and it has content, which is on Angel now. Mm -hmm. Is there a path? You will want to get that out of Angel and put it either, um, if there are files that you want, put them in something like Box or on your computer. If it's a course uh, that you can put, you can create a master course um, which is kind of a, a shell of a course without students in it that you could uh, put information in there. We use those master courses. The one I'm going to show you today is essentially a master course um, that we've created for demos or for when we're building a course that, that's not available yet. So if I wanted to work on next spring's course now, um, I might build a master course and build that now. But yeah, definitely if you have things in Angel, um, you will want to meet with one of us or Jennifer to try and make sure we get all that out. Because there, I guarantee you they're going to be a little bit cranky <laughs> about going and getting things for people. <laughs> and they're either going to say no or it's going to take a really long time. <laughs> so Get it out while you can. Yes, get it out while you have complete control. And there's fairly easy ways to do that. So like I said, if if you have things in there, we can, Emily or I can follow up with you. Jennifer, I'm sure, would follow up with you, too, to get things out of there. So this uh, this row on the left, this column on the left, it will stay the same in every course that you're in. Um, it has your courses list, some groups, a calendar. The calendar works 
in Canvas, unlike Angel, and it will coordinate with every class. So if you put a due date on an assignment for a student and they go to their calendar, they're going to see that due date along with all the due dates from every other class they have. So it, it will combine all of the classes to one calendar. It's not necessarily just a course calendar. Um, we can look at that more if you're interested. There's the inbox, which is kind of like the, the email system of Canvas, which again is outside of the course, um, although you can email courses, and we, we'll look at that um, as well. Um, there's a Commons tab, which takes to shared resources with people outside of Penn State, as well as Penn State. And my favorite button is the Help button. Um, I'm just going to pop that up quick here. Can you see that pop up? Yep. No. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yep. Um, if you click the Help button, there's several uh, ways to get help uh, from them. You can actually call them. That's 24-7 help. There's an email. My favorite is the chat because it's like instant messenger. Again, 24 seven. Um, and when you're done with them, they will email you a transcript of the whole thing. So if you can't remember how to set a due date on an assignment, for example, you could chat with them. Or if you want to chat with them about um, how do I set up a discussion forum, they can help you with that. Those kinds of things. Um, they're really helpful. It's a great asset. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay, so to get also to courses, and I'm gonna click on courses here. This will bring up all of my courses, list them that I have on the dashboard. This is not all of the courses that I have. Um, so if you don't see the course that you're looking for, scroll all the way to the bottom and click on all courses. And this will show you um, all of the courses once this, uh, oops. then I, I have all of, all the ones that I am either a student in, editor in, something like that. So the one we want to show you today is this Dutton Food for Thought. Oh, I'm going to go back real quick just to show you something really kind of handy because this is this is kind of a sticking point. If you go to your dashboard and you don't see the course that's on there, it means that one of these little stars is not filled in. The filled in stars are the courses that show up on the dashboard. So my Dutton Food for Thought is not on my dashboard because it's not filled in. If I click it, now it will show up on my dashboard. Okay? But sometimes people will be like, well, where did all my courses go? They're not there. And that, you know, that's kind of a handy trick. So we, again, we just copied in kind of a course shell um, into here, and we can work up something similar if you want to just copy this into your course just to get started and build. Um, we kind of geared this toward <laughs> just a very simple kind of resident instruction course based on 15 lessons for the fall. We even put in Thanksgiving uh, break in there. And then each one of these lessons would link to um, a module. Um, this is just a web page, kind of they call it a content page that we've linked to as our home page. You can also pick other pages that you want to start with. Um, other pages that you might want to start with is a syllabus page or the modules page or some, you could even pick the grades page if you wanted to. <laughs> but um, we picked this just as we thought it would be easy landing page for students. This uh, row in the middle, so we have the black bar, navigation bar on the left that will stay the same for every class. This navigation bar inside each course can be modified by the faculty member. Not necessarily what the words say, but what is showing to the students and also the order. Um, and to get to how we set this up, um, you go into settings and there's a navigation bar. And there's a whole lot of things that you can put in there. Everything on the top is available to the students. Everything on the bottom is available, but not available to students. If that makes sense. We suggest that you only have showing to students what you're going to use. So if you're never going to use a discussion forum, you shouldn't have it showing. Um, if you're only going to use the course for files and grades, then, then have those showing. Because then they, they, they will wonder like it's something common or something like that. Um, Canvas has a lot of drag and drop. So moving things around 
pretty much universally it is uh, easy to do. So if I wanted to bring up the, com the discussions, I could just drag it up to the top and then it would appear over here on the left once I save. Um, and anything dark is what students can see. The other nice thing I like to put, I'm gonna put this back because we don't have any discussion. Do we have any? No, we, we do, we do, but we're gonna leave it down. Yeah. Um, the other thing I like to show people from this page, which is a handy tip, is how many students you have in your class. It's not real obvious uh, to me. It wasn't really <laughs> obvious to figure out how many students you had enrolled, but from the settings page over here under current users, you can see we have four students um, enrolled in this course. You would think going to the people page would show, it will show all the students, but they're not numbered. And then you sit there and count. And I would think, Richard, for your class, you would not. <laughs> 1,100, yeah. <laughs> One, two, shoot, I forgot. How many <laughs> did I get to? So that's pretty um, handy. Um, anything on this page, Emily, that you think I should point out just for getting started? I would just page. I would just add that um, the university has been doing some surveys of students just to get oh, feedback yeah. from them about um, how they like to use Canvas. So the recommendations that we're giving you are based on um, feedback from Penn State students who basically reported that they they don't like multiple access points to the same information. So like Jane was saying, just leaving links to the things that you have in your course and really only one link to those things um, students find helpful. Okay, so I'm just gonna click back to the, the home page. Oh, I know one more thing I should have showed you. Also, <laughs> on this setting page, sometimes you wanna see what it looks like from a student perspective, right? And so you set something up and you wanna see, can they really see it or can't they really see it? On this settings page over on the right, you can click the student view. When I click student view, the whole thing come, becomes pink. And you could take a quiz this way, you could see what it looks like to submit a file this way, because it will look different for you as, from, as a faculty member. So this is a way you can um, even demo in a class, if you're in a resident instruction class, you could show them, this is what it's gonna look like uh, for you. The reset and the leave student view, if you reset, that means if you've taken a quiz, um, and you reset, it will be as if you didn't take the quiz. If you just leave the student view, it will keep um, your score, essentially. So if you're testing out the grade book, for example, seeing how those averages work, you could take a bunch of quick little assessments and look at the grade book, and it would remember all those. Change something, reset the view, be able to do it again. And I presume the full functionality is still there while you're in student view? Mm-hmm. Yep. Because and, you may recall there was an angel bug that there were certain things that if they happened while you were in student view, you could never see them because they got lost. <laughs> right. This seems to be a little bit um, better, which the Good. only thing I have found that it doesn't work great for is when you are putting people in groups and you want to look what that looks like from a group perspective. That's not so good. But just seeing how quizzes look, assignments look, grade books, modules, all of those things, that, that looks pretty good. All right, so I'll leave student view. And now I'm back on the, this home page. Um, the syllabus is a little bit different than the syllabus in Angel in that it will uh, populate, um, auto-generate, essentially, a calendar at the bottom. Um, so the top part is we've just put in information about some recommended syllabus information. Um, I also have a link to that lesson overview, which is that home page, if they want to get a, a glimpse of the whole page. And then just some recommendations for good syllabus uh, design. This course summary at the bottom, um, this is auto-generated by Canvas itself. So when I put a due date in for something, it will populate it to the bottom of this syllabus, which is really, really nice. So we're encouraging people to use those due dates on assignments um, because when you set a due date on assignment, not only does it show here on the syllabus, it will also show up in that calendar and then it also shows up on the modules page. So the modules page, let me just click to that, 
that is your like your lessons page in angel it's where you can create those quote those folders that you had created um, groups of topics so in this course we've set it up by a module for the course introduction we have a module for a student orientation if you want to put this in for students this is something that training services put together um, and it has Notice I click on that triangle and it'll open and close. So, and this is student run, so, um, or user run, so people can decide whether they want to open or close. So just because I have it closed doesn't mean that Emily couldn't have it open, for example. Um, but the, this is really handy about just all about Canvas. So if you don't want to feel like you need to be the Canvas expert for your students, you could put this in there and let them um, refer to that information. It's geared towards students. And there's even an orientation quiz um, at the bottom if they wanted to test that out, just to test their knowledge. So that's a module. Um, and then the other modules I just created were for topics. And in each topic, for this example, I just put an overview page, which is a content page with maybe what's going to cover from the week. You could put links to PDFs here, um, links to readings, assignments, those kinds of things. This would be like your, kind of like your assignment sheet, I would say, and then actual drop boxes um, we can put in. Any questions so far? I feel like I'm going a little bit fast. Doing fine. It's okay, thanks. Okay, all right. So um, let's just look at what an assignment looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that home page, and we created um, just some just different varieties of assignments, I think. Looks like I have two checks for understandings. <laughs> so I probably, we might be able to demo uh, changing that up. There's a quiz too. There's right? a quiz. I think I, I forgot yeah. one of these is the quiz. Yeah. So <laughs> well, I will demonstrate how I did this. So right here on this page, this will link to the actual um, initial course survey. You can see I'm hovering over that. Um, this one links to discussion forum one, and this one links for the check your understanding. So the text is not correct for that particular link. So on every page, the edit button is in the upper right hand corner. I'll just click edit. And I'm going to come down here. I'm going to erase this because this is the initial course survey that I want to put in there instead. When you edit a page, this uh, I guess toolbar or functionality, whatever this is called, comes up. If your screen is big enough, wide enough, I should say, it will show up on the right hand side. If I have a narrower screen, it will show up on the bottom. Okay, I like to make my screen wide enough so it shows up on the side. That's a personal preference. Um, did the lights just dim? The lights are dimming. Okay, now I've moved, so I guess I'll stay. <laughs> We were sitting too still. <laughs> um, so over here, this is how I can create links to things in my class. So this is where I could add a PDF file, a link to another part of a class, link to an assignment, maybe add an image. All of that access to insert things is easily over here on my right hand side. So I want to put a link in there to our initial course survey, which was a quiz. So I'm just going to go over here to quizzes and I'm going to find it because we've already created it. I can show you how to create those, but I've already created it. So when I, and again, my cursor is right where I want to put it over here by do. All I do is click that quiz and it will put in the text of the quiz and put it um, into my course, a link into my course. If I wanted to have it say, um, or take this quiz and I want to quiz, to be that, I could highlight the word, then click it, and it will link to that particular word. So, for especially for files, if you have file names that don't really make any sense, but you want to say, read this, you know, PDF, or use this Word document as a template, and you highlight that those texts, you can link to that um, file. And that's just on the, the second tab there. Okay, then when I'm done with that, I'm going to save. That pretty much is editing any kind of page assignment quiz similar. You could 
um, add links like that in any kind of assignment page, any kind of discussion forum, any kind of quiz question, um, pretty much all the same. All right, so let's go ahead and look at that initial course survey. This is a quiz. Um, just at first glance, I can see that it, it's a, a graded survey type quiz. We have it worth 16 points. Um, we've put it in the assignment group quizzes. That comes into effect when we're looking at the grade book. Um, I'm not shuffling any answers. There's no time limit. I'm not giving multiple attempts. Um, I'm letting students view their responses, et cetera. So you can read all of the criteria that we've set up. Um, I have shows the due date that I've put in and who I have um, assigned it to. Um, the available from and the until, that would be if we didn't want folks to see it at all um, and from a certain date to a certain date. Um, I tend to not use that much, but there might be instances where that's important. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click that edit just so you can see how we set that up. Here's the details of the assessment. There's the name of it. We put in the description. Here's where we could choose what kind of quiz it was. So there are graded quizzes, practice quizzes, graded surveys, ungraded surveys. Um, I could switch it to different. These are the four assignment groups that we have in this particular course. Um, how many points, et cetera. And then at the very bottom is the due date. These questions are on the second tab. And we can, at a further time, if you need to set up quizzes and want help with that, um, there's multiple ways to do, to import questions and all sorts of different kinds of options. But basically we just put the questions in here. All right, so if I wanted to preview what that quiz would look like, I hit the preview button and here's what it looks like. So we have a text box question and multiple select. So they can select from this whole list. I can tell that because the boxes are square. Um, if it was multiple choice, they would be round. But this one is you can pick as select as many topics as needed. Um, here's another uh, enter text question, another multiple select question, more input. We'll select. And this is just an initial course, course survey um, that we pulled in from another course. And they just want to kind of get an idea of what where the students were when they came into the course. Kind of a good idea if you um, want to know what their base level is. See the difference between question 11 and question 12? The indicators, the, these are square and these are round. So I know this is a, a select all that apply and this one is a multiple choice. Okay, so that gives you kind of an idea. We had some of our friends take the quiz for us. So I'm going to cancel out of here. I think I can hit, keep it in the search at the top. So I could fill out the quiz to try it out myself. I'm just gonna say keep editing. Okay, and then I will save. All right, so now when I wanna come in and look at the quiz itself, like how people did, what they answered, et cetera. Um, I can use the moderate, moderate this survey will show you who's taking it, um, if they're still taking it, how long they took, kind of some statistics, and then an overall score. So we have three, we had four students, and it looks like Maria did not attempt the quiz. I can see that pretty easily. Um, and then we could also see some survey statistics if you're interested in that. The speed grader is universal between all the assignments and quizzes to be able to look at how your students um, did individually or if I needed to grade something individually. And we're going to show you um, what that looks like as an assignment as well. So here's the, um, the quiz on the left and I could go through um, each question for this particular student. Which student is it? I look on the right and I can see it's Jennifer. If they use the drop down menu next to Jennifer's name, um, and I click on that, okay, anybody that has a check mark by it shows that it's been graded. Because this is auto graded, 
it's grading it for me. Um, it shows that it's been graded. Notice that um, um, two people did not take it. How come I didn't see Maggie on there? Hers was still in process. Oh, she's still working on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so these two have not submitted them. That's why they're still grayed out. So I can quickly at a glance to see who's taken it and who hasn't. Um, if there was, and I'll show you in the assignments, if somebody had submitted it but we hadn't graded it, there would be an orange circle by it. Um, so you can see that that's something that you need to grade. Okay, so I, if I just want to look through Jennifer's responses really quick, I could go through and look. And here, here go our lights again. <laughs> we need to like, um, and I could go through uh, what they answered. Um, I can also, um, let me click that little triangle out of the way. I can see that there's, that she got a 16 out of 16. Um, if I wanted to give comments, there's several ways I can give feedback back to the student. I could attach a file if I wanted to. I could actually just do a media comment. I'm not sure if I want to do that for 1,100 students, but you <laughs> could take the time to, instead of, you know, they can really get the idea of your tone if you just talk your answers or talk your feedback as well, or wanted to talk to them. You can do that as well as just typing um, as well. Any questions about, about what is up? So how do they get, do they have to come look for the feedback? Does it email to them? Does it text to them? What, how do they get it? Good question. So um, yes, yes, and maybe. I think are the answers to that. It depends on how they particularly have set up, set up kind of that initial email or response, how they want to be notified. Okay. Um, under their account, there are notifications and they could set it up so that they will get a text message for when something's graded. Um, there's an app actually on their phone they could download and it would pop up on the app as well. They could see that. Um, by default, they're going to get an email that says, hey, this has been graded. Um, but so we want to send them a note that says, um, Penn State closed Tuesday because of the snowstorm. This is what we're going to do to fill in. Um, they decide how they get it. They do decide how they get that. Yep. Okay. By default, they do get it, though. They would have to come in here and turn it off specifically. Okay. So but by Fault. they get it because you know the emergent thing is that students refuse to read email yeah they will um, they will get a notification if they've got it set up so I have it set up so I have Twitter I could even have it send me <laughs> if up they're always on Twitter I did have it originally on um, a notification for all my devices but I was in so many classes and I got a notification every time somebody turned something in <laughs> That was not a good thing. <laughs> My phone was phone gone. never stopped. It just never stopped. I was like, okay, this works well. I'm turning this off. <laughs> um, but by default, uh, it, will, it will be sent to them. But then in principle, they can go in and turn this off, and then you send them the note that says you have to do X, and they never know. <laughs> and that, yep, that is a bad choice for their... It would be, yes. Thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have documentation that you notified them, and they're yes. supposed to not get it. So, you know. Um, and there's a couple ways, and maybe I'll have Emily talk about how you can notify students, just that exact sample, because I think there's a couple ways that you could tell students that. Um, let me finish the quiz, and then maybe we should jump into that, and then we can go into the sample, because that's a really good, That I think that's a really good um, important thing to want to know. Um, but under the account is where students can can check that information. So let me jump back into the course. And I was at, so see, I can jump into quizzes as a faculty member of the course. So it's easy for me to jump to the, the quiz that I wanna look at, that initial course survey. I don't have to go through it um, from that first page. So that that's um, speed grader. It also, well, this one's not graded, but students also will see that feedback in grades. When they click on grades, <coughs> excuse me, this is what it looks like for you as faculty member. 
where I see all the students. If I clicked just on Jennifer, this is more of a look of what she gets when she clicks on grades. She'll see all the assignments. Um, she'll see the categories of how she's and how she's doing and then a total of how she's currently doing. And then over here on the right, this graphic can be a little bit confusing, but it's helpful um, to show students that if they continue on the path that they're continuing, they could expect to get, you know, the bottom grade. If they were to just drop the class right now and not complete any more assignments, that's what the top grade is. So sometimes they get a little bit panicked um, that the top score shows a bad grade, but it's really just the progress that they've made through the class of what has been assigned and submitted. Um, it's important to, and this is something I definitely should tell you, um, if you're gonna import your grades, which I would think Richard, you would do for sure, importing your grades into Lion Path at the end, that you make sure you have a grade in there for every student, for every assignment. So whether it's a zero or um, not, you know, a grade, they need to have that in there or Lion Path will not pull in the correct grade. And this is another check uh, for that as well. Okay. So, okay, Emily, do you want to talk about um, assign, um, announcements or email? Sure. Yeah, you want to just click on it? Sure. It'll probably be more efficient. So we also wanted to give you an example of the announcements feature in Canvas. So if you are wanting to, um, like the example you just gave, Richard, is a good example. The snow day that we had, and that's actually the example that we pulled to show you here. Um, so if something comes up and you need any classes canceled or there's something that you want students to complete before class, announcements is a way for you to communicate to the entire class at one time. Um, so again, students, unless they've turned it off, they, by default, they should be notified that you have posted an announcement in the course um, so that that information can get to them. Um, the announcements are nice because um, as you copy a course from semester to semester, the announcements will come along, which um, some people really like. Um, you do have to have to be careful. And if you do copy the announcements, you want to check your dates and make sure that um, announcements from the previous semester aren't releasing, you know, at a time when you wouldn't want them to. But um, there are a lot of people who like that feature, being able to um, save that information from semester to semester, which is nice. Um, you can also, if you want to set up your announcements ahead of time, you can time when they'll release. So you can schedule them to release in the future. Um, that is also convenient for people who are doing, you know, doing work you know, in preparation for maybe a time when they'll be, they'll be traveling or have some other conflict. Um, you do also have the option, Jane already showed you the inbox, which is the sort of equivalent to email that Canvas has. You can, when you go into your course here um, in this, they call it conversations, Canvas conversations, um, you can email all of the students in your class at once as well. So that is another option that you have for communicating with everyone. Um, we do recommend, though, that if you do that, you check that little box that um, shows up that says to send individual emails to all students. That way, if someone does reply to you, they won't be replying to all 1,100 people in the course, um, but their reply should just go back to you. Yeah, that's that's really important. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> if I can get out of this little window, I'll show you the <laughs> cute out. little box. <laughs> she's referring yeah. to let me out because it's true the moment the students see each other in a large yeah. class there it's an individual message to each recipient so that means they can't reply to all right right yeah and we have we do like to advise people a best practice i think um is i like to start new conversations um there have been situations where there's been um, a professor and maybe a teaching assistant and a student involved. Maybe a conversation began between a student and a TA, and then the TA, you know, shared that conversation with um, the professor. Um, I feel like these these conversations are almost more analogous to a group text, if that makes sense. Right. Um, so there have been cases where where students have been kind of looped into a conversation that. Um, 
that course admins, either the professor or TA or someone else, you know, thought the students were no longer a part of. So basically, we just like to advise people that um, rather than just keep an email chain going or a conversation chain going, just start a new one, um, especially in those cases where you're talking about a, um, a situation that might involve a student. Yeah, probably this send an individual message should be the default rather than an opt-in, to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are a couple situations like that in Canvas, but mm -hmm. yeah. You can attach an attachment to this, mm -hmm. these inbox announcements as well, but notice there's nowhere to really make things bold or change font or it's really that kind of text messaging kind of thing. Whereas in announcements, you can make it look how you want it to look. That's true. As yeah. well. um, I'm just going to cancel this so they don't. <laughs> Some people actually like to use, um, there's that media button there as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I've seen um, several of our instructors who like to um, use that media button. And instead of a typed email message or a typed uh, conversation or a typed announcement, they'll record one. So students, when they see that announcement, they actually have a video of the professor um, sharing yeah. their announcement. The, the system is robust enough to handle that kind of, of um, volume for a large class. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because Angel is, you know, we, we broke Angel routinely with email and there's a <laughs> outside of Angel, Angel emailer that I've had to use for years because Angel is incapable of doing email. Right. <laughs> On that right. scale, for sure. Yeah. And if you do have a student that emails you through this system, um, it will it will come into your Penn State email account. Okay. You don't have to go into Canvas to see the messages. Good. So that's also another feature. You can actually respond to out of your Penn State email. Um, if you just hit reply, you'll notice the address. It'll uh, navigate through Canvas and back to the student. Okay. Thank you. This is good gets away from third factor authentication all the time. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, any questions about communicating? I think those, we wanted to make sure you knew about the two different kinds of advantages and disadvantages of announcements versus inbox. And then you have a record too of who you've emailed and you can go back in that inbox and see all the announcements. Okay, so we looked at the quiz. Let's look at the other assignment, the check for understanding assignment, which is um, a, like a Dropbox kind of assignment. Um, if we open this assignment, we can see that it is worth five points and it for what they need to submit, it's a text entry box. Um, if I click the edit, you can see how I set that up. Actually, Emily set that up. <laughs> work together. I would work together. We work together. Um, but you'll see, uh, here, remember that this looks very similar to the other one. Um, you have a similar WYSIWYG in here where you can add, here you can even put in a recording as well. Um, if you wanted to explain an assignment or something like that instead, you could do that. Um, but you could link to YouTube videos in here, any kind of text you want to put in. Um, you can put in there for your assignment, how much the assignment is worth. Again, we're back to that, which group does it go into? Um, we made this assignment, uh, because of the nature of the assignment, share the muddiest points for you uh, for today's lecture. So this is kind of like the ticket out the door, help them reflect upon what was happening uh, in the lecture today, just to get to, to to think about that some more. So it's not really something that you're testing their knowledge on, but you want to get feedback. On. We're giving them points for it, but if they do it, they get credit for it. So that's why it's um, the display will be, the grade will be whether they completed it or incompleted it. Um, here's where I can choose what they, they submit. Uh, whether this, we're just having them do a text entry. We don't want them to spend a lot of time on it. We don't want them to have to worry about typing out a, a Word document and attaching it. Um, it's just a text entry box. Although I could give them the option to do either one. So I could give them a text entry or I could say if you prefer to type out a, a file and attach it, uh, they could. So I could do both of those. And I do have the ability to restrict the file type. 
So this comes in really handy if you have those sneaky students that will try and submit a type of document that you are not able to open, like a pages document uh, for Windows folks, they can't open those, or a, uh, I'm trying to think of like, not the Office, but the Microsoft, or uh, yeah, but understood. Word sure. Perfect or something. Yeah. Anyway, but if you want them to submit, say, a PDF or a Word document, you can actually check that box and put in, I will only accept DOC, DOC X, or a PDF file. Um, if it's a media file, you could say, I only want MP4 files, etc. Um, you could restrict that to students. They will not be able to upload it unless it's one of those three types. Um, whether or not it's a group assignment, uh, there are there's ability to peer review. Um, that would be for another day discussion, but just keep that in the back of your head that you could create assignments where students have to look at them. Again, who's it going to, and then that due date. And the due date, we again encourage people to put the due date here rather than in the text of the document because it will show up on the syllabus, the modules page, and the calendar. Um, and then, okay, here's the really cool part. We didn't really show this in that settings, but when you're transferring from one spring to an next spring or fall to a fall, you can say, well, this semester started on the 11th and the following year it started on the 13th and it will shift all of your dates for you. So you don't have to go through and if you always wanted your assignments due on a Friday, it will automatically shift for you. Very convenient, very, very handy. Okay, so I'll save um, those changes and then we have I can see over here that I have some submissions I have three submissions and I have not graded any of them so it gives me some information there if I wanted to download them all at once and take them with me I was gonna be in the woods and I wanted to grade I don't know. <laughs> um, sometimes you want to do things with those files so there are times where you want to actually download them um, but Canvas has a really nice feature called the Speed Grader for editing these kinds of documents. Um, I would say hands down, this is the part of Canvas that I've gotten the most positive feedback about, that grading has gone a lot faster um, in Canvas than it ever did in Angel. So when I click on Speed Grader, we looked at it a little bit with um, quizzes, but in assignments, we can See that what they've turned in, the text that they've turned in. So this is what a Jennifer turned in. I'm going to use that drop down. So remember, I was telling you the orange circles show that it's been um, graded or not graded, submitted but not graded. Okay. If especially for a text kind of assignment, if I want to give um, feedback to everybody before the grades are dispersed, so. If I'm starting with the A's, I don't want the S's to say, hey, how come you haven't graded my paper yet when, you know, Shirley Adams got hers back three days ago. You can, what is known as mute the assignment. Um, over here on the left, there's a little speaker. If I mute it, and I'll go ahead and click it, what that means is I'm going to grade this. Um, students don't get my feedback until I'm completely done grading. Then when I unmute it, the students will get an email that says your faculty member has unmuted it and your grade is available, um, which is kind of a nice <coughs> that might take a while to grade. Um, I can go through and, um, oh, there's two different views. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen that before. I'll say, sorry to interrupt, this has been very helpful, but I do need to run at this point. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm afraid I have to do the same. So All right. it has indeed been very helpful, and thank you. Uh, well, you're good at this. Before you guys go, I uh, just want to add one more little plug that if you need help uh, when you're getting ready to uh, work on this, or if you want the template, especially, um, you know, if you want something similar to that, just contact Emily or I or Jennifer and we can connect you uh, with that. Okay, I, I certainly know how to annoy Jennifer. I'm good at that. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time this afternoon because it has at least guided me in terms of the questions I need to ask in the future. Yep. Good, well hopefully it was helpful and we're gonna continue to do these food for thought sessions monthly. The topics will change 
Um, next month we're going to do some more Canvas topic because that's the topic of the day. Um, and we'll do some other kinds of like hidden gem things. So you might just want to come to that to get yeah. some other ideas. Okay. okay. Enjoy, enjoy your cupcakes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.